Today, Rado runs through Scorpius Freighter, which is a game where we are going to recruit crew, customize ships, and smuggle goods. I'm going to be showing you how it works today in a two-player run-through. Although, before I get going, I strongly recommend you turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And if you have done so, well then, folks, welcome to the Scorpius system. Three planets that are under a despotic rule from an evil government. And wouldn't you know, we actually work for that government. It's kind of our day job. But we are also smugglers working right underneath our evil galactic overlord bosses trying to spread medicine and complete contracts and do all kinds of Robin Hoody type stuff. Because that's just the way we are. Now I've already got the game set up here which means we've got some random contracts, some random side jobs, some random uh, upgrades, and some random storage that we could get installed on our ships. Also, we've got our ship. And this is a two-sided board. You can play with the advanced side, which is what I'm doing, or the regular side. On the advanced side, there are some places that are already considered occupied. We can never build here, so we have to do more with less kind of a thing. And we also get one random cockpit that gives us a special starting power. Mine is, I can get to the informant action much more readily than other players. So that's pretty handy. Jen, meanwhile, over here on her ship, well, in her cockpit, if she's got, um, she can basically find medicine, the most valuable resource somewhere, and get it stored in her cockpit. She doesn't need to have storage for it specifically. And also, as part of setup, we had to recruit our starting crew. And that's done, either you can uh, choose some preset ones that the game has already got made up, or you can draft, which is much cooler. So you have a customized crew. That's what I've done uh, for both of us. Jen's crew over here is interesting. She gets three points at the end of the game because because of Rafa, if she gets Rafa's special power um, turned on, which is going to cost money, as you can see. That's true for all these. It's showing what their special power could be if we meet an informant and do what we need to do to get them leveled up. So anyway, so she wants to get all four of her characters leveled up because that would be 12 points for her. Uh, and so because of that, she chose like some cheaper ones that didn't cost quite so much to recruit. So she's hoping to recruit everybody. And she's got Tyus here, who makes it easier for her to outfit her ships with new equipment. And that's good because she gets two points for every equipment tile if she gets, uh, what's his name, 3.14 installed or upgraded or experienced, I think is the term. But most important is Trin, her pilot. Once he's experienced, at the uh, was it, the start of her turn, she can unload for free, doesn't require an action, unload medicine and turn it into skill. And since she can kind of generate medicine out of nothing, these two things should work well together. Meanwhile, over here on my ship, I've got a motley assortment of folks. I've got Og, who, remember I, um, I have more ready access to the informant action, and Og, makes me better at that informant action again once I have upgraded him you know uh, you know spent the the money I need to do that Mag, uh, basically, he's expensive. Going to cost a lot to upgrade this guy, but once I do, he's very powerful. He lets me move really far, up to three spaces instead of the one or two that you're normally limited to. So I have a lot more control over my destiny. Tommy, this crazy uh, bird person, we shall call him, is one point for storage tile. That's cool. So that means I want to fill up my ship with more storage tiles beyond the first two I have as part of setup. And that's because Coda, my pilot here, gives me 14 points minus one for every empty space. So I need to get this ship totally filled up so that I don't lose any of those sweet, sweet points. And I want to fill them up with storage tiles thanks to Tommy. So that's my crew. Jen's got her crew. Let's stop introducing them. Let's, let's, uh, let's get going. So I am the first player. I've got the Scorpius signal right there. And what you do on your turn is you normally can activate one or two of your crew members to move one of these big government ships one or two spaces clockwise on the rondelle around any of these planets. And then wherever that ship lands, you do that action. Now everybody has a nice little summary of what all the actions are right there on their board. A little summary of how your turn works. Move one or two spaces depending on how many you activate. And so, right out the gate, I want to get my characters leveled up and working for me. Uh, so, I, if I look here, if I uh, move this ship one space forward, I will be at the informant action, which means I can level up. So that's where I'm going. Now, I've got to activate one of them. I'll just go in and activate Tommy. All right. And since I'm activating only one, not two, but one of my characters, that means I move one space which is exactly where I wanted to go. And now I get to do this action. And 
basically, the strength with which I can do that action is based on how many of my characters are not activated. Since I've still got the skill icon on these three characters, I've got three skill that I can use for the informant action. And over here, it's a reminder for the informant action. Um, basically, you flip over a card crew by paying uh, money, credits, which are orange, although here in my prototype, they're yellow. By the way, I should say, everything you're seeing here is prototype today, folks. Should be a pretty good idea of what the final game looks like, but still, prototype warning. Anyway, so I gotta spend credits to uh, flip them, but I get a discount based on how much skill. So I've already got a three skill discount, which means upgrading AUG would be totally free. Upgrading Coda would cost one credit, and I start with one credit and one good. But I don't need to upgrade him until the end of the game, because he doesn't give me a power throughout. Neither does a Tommy. So I want to upgrade Mag, but I can't. I've got a discount of three, which means I need two more. I've only got one. So I'm going to upgrade little Augie here. And that just basically means he is flipped. He's still available. Uh, upgrading them or ex making them experience by speaking to an informant doesn't change whether they're activated or not. I could activate Tommy here. I just don't need to because he doesn't give me an immediate power. So now I've got access to Aug's power, which means in the future when I do the informant, I've got plus one skill. So if I were to uh, do an informant right away, uh, I'd have two skill, but because of Aug here, I'd actually have three, making it cheaper to recruit. Jen wishes she had Aug because that would help her recruit, uh, because she's got that thing of trying to get everybody recruited. So anyway, that was my first turn. And um, now, at the end of my turn, if three or all four of my crew members have been activated, which is to say they don't have their skill token showing anymore, then at the end of my turn, they all slide back out, and then they're ready to go again. So... That was it. It is now Jen's turn. And Jen would like very much to recruit and get her special powers active too. But, uh, benefit of being first, I grabbed the only quick and easy informant action. Now you can see um, there is no other rondelle or no other informant action on this planet. You'd have to go all the way around, and that would take quite a while before we can get to the informant again. And if we look over here on this planet, we're st we start out, the ship starts out, this is a starting spot, on the informant. So it's got to go all the way around. So if Jen wants to get an informant anytime soon, over here there's one, but she would have to move one, two spaces, which means she'd have to activate two of her guys, which means she would only have two skill instead of three, like I did. So is she going to do that? Is she going to do that? Well, who she she would like to get Trin activated so she could start leveraging his uh, medicine uh, power. Um, although she'd like to get Tyus updated too, so that she will be better at installing equipment, which she wants to do because of three. All right, so yeah, I think she will. She will activate two characters. What the heck? She'll activate Rafa and three. And uh, that means she can move two. Bippity bop. And so she's got access to the only other quick, easy informant action. Although me, I can always use my cockpit to use informants, so I don't have to worry. So, I mean, I didn't even have to rush out after this. I just rushed after it to make Jen have to pay more to get to the other one that she wanted. Anyway, so I've activated two, which means I've only got two skill. But you know what? Tyus only needs two. Um, well, he needs two credits. So two credits minus the two skill means I upgraded him for free. So Jen did. So now Jen has is better at equipment than I am because she has one bonus skill. And that was Jen's turn. Back to me. Okay, so what do I still got here? Well, um, so the interesting thing is, if I, if I were to try to do an informant action again, I'd have one, two, three, plus the one means I could get Coda active or, uh, you know, but I, really, I don't need to do them. It would be nice to get some more money so that I could get Mag active because then I can move three spaces by activating three. So that means I can cycle through my crew much, much faster once I get him activated. So it'd be nice to get that done. But um, I, I, I can't right now because even with Aug here, having uh, his extra little bo boost, it's not quite enough since I don't have enough credits. But I also got to think about what am I going to do? Um, you know, if I look at the three ships, I could uh, do a side deal and score some points. And in fact, I start with some goods. Everybody starts with one goods. I could complete this side deal right now and get two points for those goods. Or, uh, if I wanted to, I could start a contract. Although, none of the contracts really make much sense for me to try and do right now. I don't have enough resources, so that would have to come a little bit later. If I move one or two here, I could, if I move one, I could start installing more storage. And remember, 
That's my goal. I want to. So yeah, I think I am just going to move this ship one by activating Coda here. And all right, so that means my second activation. I still have two skill. I will be able to use two skill for the purposes of installing more modules. And what that means is over here. You can see there's four modules out here, just totally chosen at random. Since I got two skill, I can take this one or this one. I can get a security vault or to store more money or a storage module to store more goods, i.e. Uh, yellow or green cubes. I, I, I cannot get to this drug one, unfortunately, but after I take one of these, it'll slide down and become cheaper later on. So I might be able to pick it up later. Um, but let's see, do I want to store more money or more goods? Let's come back over here and look at the contracts that are available. This contract wants data, goods, and money. This one wants a lot of goods, four goods and data and some money. And the thing is, after I complete this contract, I'll get the benefit of get, instantly getting two of any I want and storing them on the contract itself. So that's pretty cool. So, I mean, this thing basically, it costs two resources left because once I've done it, I'll get a bunch back. Plus, um, there are four, eight, 12 points to be had for completing it. So, but it needs a lot of goods. I think I'm gonna take this good storage module. This is the one I'm taking. And now I have to expand it from one of my existing occupied spaces. And I will expand it right here. And by doing that, I now have two uh, green storage compartments, or this hidden compartment and this storage module next to each other. That means I've got one green area, or oh, what is it called? Um, it's called, uh, yeah, it's a storage area. I have two storage areas on my ship. I've got this storage area that's comprised of one, but since these are the same, this is considered a separate storage area. And where, whenever you're building out, wherever possible, you do kind of want to get like-colored storage next to each other so you can get bigger and bigger storage area, which will make more sense once I pick up cargo. So anyway, that was my second action. I'm going to have to do another action with which I will only have one skill. All right, so that was it for me. It is now Jen's second turn, and she wants to start taking advantage of Tyus's ability. So where could she get some equipment? Well, the main place to do it is over on this, because you can see there's an equipment option and equipment option. There's two places to go to get new ship equipment, and that's it. None of the other planets offer it. But again, if Jen wants to do it, she would have to jump two, because if she jumps one to uh, start expanding storage like you just saw me do, then I might be the one to jump over here, ahead of her. So Jen will go on ahead and spend two again, although that's kind of a problem. Well, let's see, she can spend two, which means, boom, oh, I'm sorry, not her. She can spend two, Tyus and Trin could get to work, but she'd have a problem. She has no skill, which means she won't be able to do anything. But remember, Tyus offers one bonus skill. So even though all of her guys are exhausted, they don't offer skill, Taya somehow finds the strength to give her at least one skill for equipment, which means Jen would be able to pick up the mech rod. She couldn't get the stash, the dispensary, or the robotic arm because those require two, three, or four skill. Does Jen want this mech rod? Let's take a look at it. Alrighty, so this says, when you are expanding, like you saw me do, getting more storage compartments on your ship, all right, with skill equal to the number of adjacent tiles. Oh. So this makes it easier. This, this basically is another skill boost. So um, where, wherever you're putting stuff down with this, you could uh, get more expensive stuff while not having the skill for it. So this basically bumps up your skill for installing storage modules. So that's nice. I mean, sure, that's nice. But is that what Jen wants? Is that what Jen wants? Because if Jen just waits until her crew resets, then she could go for something really big. Like, this is what she really wants. She wants this dispensary because, boom, then there's more medicine storage, which would dovetail with Trent. So, uh, let's see here. Would she do that? Yeah, I think she will. She is only going to do one. She'll go on ahead and activate Tyus, which means she's only going to move one space. And she's moving here. Oops, by the way, I forgot. After I got my storage, the other ones got cheaper and a new one came out. And it's another security vault. Which are the, really the, the two most common things. Ways to store credits, ways to store goods. These medical ones are a bit rarer. So anyway, so um, Jen is just going to get herself some additional storage as well. She has only one skill at that, so she will get this security vault. And she will expand her lockbox, so now she has an area devoted to green goods and an area that's too big 
devoted to getting more credits. And again, these slide over, a new one comes out. Hey, it's a server farm, some sweet data. That's our first opportunity to actually get data, which is necessary for a bunch of these contracts and for a couple of side deals. But right now, it's very expensive. It costs four skill. So that was Jen's turn. Now, I should say, at the end of Jen's turn, she, three of her four crew are all tuckered out, which means they all reset. So Jen is starting out her next round with a really big uh, move that she can make. Whereas me, I'm still kind of limping along over here uh, because now I've got to activate one or two. I could activate one or two, and then at the end of my turn, I'll get them all back. What do I want to do? Well, let's see here. Whatever I'm going to do, I'm only going to have one skill. That's not entirely true. I could have two, if I went like this, I could have two skill if it was an informant action, but I can't get to an informant right away, can I? Uh, let's see, no I can't. Remember, they're all so far away. But I do have another option. Where are they? Um, right, oh, it's when I want to operate my freighter, right. So, yes, yes, I'm gonna do it. Am I gonna do it? Will that be two, will that be enough? Then I'll have three? No, it won't be enough. Ah, it'd be so cool, I could almost pull this combo off. If I did this, uh, which lets me move one. I could move this ship here. Now this is the action that says activate the special powers of my ship. The only special power I have right now is the cockpit. And the cockpit says do an informant action with a skill of zero. But it would be zero plus one plus two, so I'd have two total skill. I could do an informant action. So that's two skill plus one credit means I have a total of three. I need more than three to upgrade anybody, so I can't pull that off. That would be a really great combo. I'm just short by one coin. So you know, maybe, maybe I should start loading up some cargo. That I mean, you know, we're smugglers after all, right? So maybe I should be doing that. Now, uh, that would be this action. So if I spend two, I could jump here. But if I spend two, I've got no skill, so I can only spend one. I mean, I've got to spend one, which means then I could get some equipment. I could spend one to activate my ship. Although again, as I just said, it won't necessarily work. Or I could spend one to come over here to complete a side deal. It's not where I was after, but what the heck, I'll do it. Yeah, I'll do it anyway. So mag over here activates to move me one space, and I'm gonna do a side deal. These are the ones that are available. And basically, the more skill I have, the more of these I can complete in a single action. Remember, I only have one skill, or two if I were doing an informant, but I only have one. So I can only do one of these. I will complete this side deal, which requires one green good. And so I've spent it. I've scored two points. Hooray! I actually did some smuggling, everybody. And let's see. A new, all right. And so I, if I had more skill and I had more goods, I could do more. But as it is, I'm just going to end it right there. And a side deal requiring another good comes out. All right. So that was my turn. And now, like Jen before me, all of my guys are available. So I can start going for big actions um, once more. Although it is Jen's turn. And folks... I'm going to stop right there because that gives you a basic idea of the flow of this game. But I've only barely scratched the surface of all the cool combo chain stuff and whatnot you can do. So if you would like to watch a bit more of Scorpius Freighter, you can hit that eye up in the top right corner of the screen to go to the extended playthrough. Or instead, you can go to Final Thoughts. Your choice in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.